Capillary Circulation Chapter 111 Introduction Microcirculation Microcirculation refers to flow of blood through the minute blood vessels such as arterioles, capillaries, and venules. Capillary circulation forms the major part of microcirculation. Human body contains about 10 billion capillaries. Study of Capillary Circulation Blood flow through capillaries is studied by focusing the capillaries under dissecting microscope. Frog's web, mesentery of mammals and fingernail bed of humans can be observed by using microscope. Features of capillaries Capillaries arise from arterioles and form the actual functional area of circulatory system, i.e. exchange of materials between blood and tissues. Structurally, capillaries are very narrow and short. However, quantitatively, these vessels outnumber the other blood vessels. About 10 billion capillaries are present in the body. Each capillary lies in a very close proximity to the cells of the tissues at a distance of about 20 to 30 millimeters. This enables easy and rapid exchange of substances between blood and the tissues through interstitial fluid. Dimensions of Capillaries Dimensions of capillaries are given in Table 111.1. Velocity and Volume of Blood Flow Average velocity of blood flow through capillaries is 0.05. About 5% of total blood is present in capillaries. Structure of capillaries Capillaries are formed by single layer of endothelial cells, which are wrapped around by pericytes. Endothelial cells Endothelial cells of the capillaries are thin, flattened, nucleated polygonal cells joined together by a cement substance. Capillaries do not have muscular coat. Yet, these blood vessels actively modify their own diameter in response to nervous, hormonal, chemical, and physical stimuli. Endothelial cells themselves alter the diameter of capillaries by swelling or shrinking. In most of the capillaries, Adjacent endothelial cells leave a cleft called fenestra through which several substances may traverse the endothelium by means of transcytosis, Fig 111.1. However, in cerebral capillaries the fenestra are absent because the endothelial cells fuse to each other by tight junctions, Chapter 163. Parasites. Parasite is a perivascular mesenchymal-like cell associated with walls of small blood vessels such as capillaries and post-capillary vessels. It is similar to renal mesangial cell. It is also known as mural cell or rugae cell, named after the discoverer Charles Rugae. Pericytes extend long cytoplasmic processes, which wrap around the endothelial cells. Pericytes play important role in remodeling and maintenance of capillary system. These cells are contractile in nature and secrete several vasoactive agents, growth factors, extracellular matrix, and components of basement membrane. Pericytes are also involved in regulation of blood flow through endothelial junctions particularly in conditions such as inflammation. Pattern of capillary system. Capillaries are disposed between arterioles and venules. From the arterioles, the meta-arterioles take origin, Fig 111.2. From meta arterioles, two types of capillaries arise preferential channels. True capillaries. One preferential channels. Preferential channels are also called continuous capillaries. After arising from meta arterioles, these capillaries form a network and finally join the venules. Preferential channels or continuous capillaries have same diameter as meta-arterioles. Two true capillaries. True capillaries also form a network and join the venules. Diameter of the true capillaries is less than that of the meta-arterioles. Precapillary sphincter. Beginning of true capillaries is encircled by smooth muscle fibers. It functions as a sphincter, so it is known as precapillary sphincter. 
it controls the blood flow through true capillaries. Anatomical and physiological shunts. Anatomical shunt. Anatomical shunt is the direct link between arterioles and venules. It is also called arteriovenous shunt. Flow of blood through the capillaries where exchange of nutrients, gases, and other substances takes place is called nutritional flow. Blood flow through anatomical shunt is called non-nutritional flow. Non-nutritional blood flow occurs in many tissues of the body particularly during resting conditions when metabolic activities are low. Physiological shunt. Physiological shunt is the link between arterial and venous side of circulation provided by meta-arteriole. Many tissues of the body such as muscles do not have anatomical shunts. However, the meta-arteriole in these tissues acts as the physiological shunt between arterial and venous sides of the circulation. Non-nutritional blood flow occurs through physiological shunt under resting conditions. Shunt in capillaries vs shunt in heart. Physiological shunt in capillaries is different from physiological shunt in heart. In capillaries, the oxygenated blood flows towards deoxygenated blood. But in heart, the deoxygenated blood flows towards the oxygenated blood. Chapter 108. Peculiarities of capillary blood flow. Blood does not pass through capillary system continuously. It is because of the alternate constriction and dilatation of meta-arterioles and the alternate opening and closure of precapillary sphincters. Direction of blood flow through capillaries is not fixed as in the case of other blood vessels. Blood may flow in opposite direction in two adjacent capillaries. In capillaries, blood flows as a single pile or single row of blood cells. In other blood vessels, the blood flows in either axial stream containing mainly blood cells or peripheral stream containing plasma. Under resting conditions, most of the capillaries lie in collapsed state. Only during activity, all the capillaries open up and increase the vascularity. Amount of blood flowing through the capillary system throughout the body is very low. It is only about 150 ml slash minute. Velocity of blood flow is least in capillaries. It is only about 0.05 cm slash second. It facilitates exchange of substances between capillaries and tissues. Functions of capillaries. Most important function of capillaries is the exchange of substances between blood and tissues. Oxygen, nutrients, and other essential substances enter the tissues from capillary blood, Carbon dioxide, metabolites, and other unwanted substances are removed from the tissues by capillary blood. Exchange of materials across the capillary endothelium occurs by the following processes, diffusion, filtration, pinocytosis, diffusion. Diffusion is the main process for exchange of gases, water, glucose, sodium, urea, and many other substances. These substances diffuse through the intercellular clefts present in the endothelial wall of the capillaries. Diffusion occurs because of concentration gradient across the capillary wall. Filtration Site of filtration of substances through capillary ME membrane varies in different organs. In skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles, kidneys, and intestine, filtration occurs through the slit pores present in capillary endothelium. Capillaries in other organs have discontinued endothelium through which filtration occurs. Filtration of substance capillary endothelium depends upon the net filtration pressure. Net filtration pressure is the balance between the driving pressures and the opposing pressures. It is well explained by Starling Hypothesis, Chapter 52. Process of filtration is explained in Chapter 27. Pinocytosis. Larger molecules are transported across the capillary endothelium in the form of vesicles. Large molecules are packed as vesicles in the capillary endothelial cells. These vesicles are transported across the endothelial membrane by the process called pinocytosis, Chapter 3. Factors Controlling Capillary Circulation Capillary blood flow is controlled by the nervous and chemical factors. Nervous Factors Capillaries are mainly supplied by the sympathetic vasoconstrictor fibers. Chemical factors. 
Many chemical factors such as excess of carbon dioxide, increased hydrogen ion concentration, lack of oxygen, histamine, and metabolites like lactic acid cause dilatation of capillaries. Serotonin causes constriction of capillaries.